Welcome back, everyone. Big bets for the big game are adding up as more states have introduced legislation for gambling, prompting a surge for new customer acquisition from sports books. Here with more is Yahoo Finance's Josh Schaefer. Josh, just help us quantify the growth in wager volume even before the Super Bowl. Yeah, Brad, it's been huge. I mean, Americans are really interested in sports gambling. So we got information out today from the American Sports Gaming Association, which is projecting that this will be a record year for Super Bowl gambling. They project that it's going to be 31.4 million Americans, which is up 35% from last year, gambling on the game. And then for an exact handle, the projections are that it's going to be $7.6 billion bet on this game. That's more than $3 billion more than last year. Um, we should note that respondents of that survey, it was about uh, 2,200 people, slightly favored the Rams. About 55% said that they were probably going to bet on the Rams. And the Rams are favored at about four and a half points, depending on when you bet and what you look at. Now, I spoke earlier today with American Gaming Association CEO Bill Miller about the increase in betting interest from last year. And he cited really the growth in legalization and just the genuine interest from customers to gamble legally. They like these marketing deals they're getting. They like using the apps. They're interested in betting legally. There's 10 more states this year that are legal than last year's Super Bowl, and 30 states and Washington, D.C., so 31 different territories are eligible to gamble this year. That's more than we've ever seen for the Super Bowl. Thus, the numbers go up. I mean, we should note this industry is only four years old and not even four years old. It's really growing state by state. And Miller expects it to grow even more headed into next year. He told Yahoo Finance some states to watch are going to be Florida and California. Those bigger population states are going to be really interesting to see what happens, because as we saw with New York last week, if you can get a state with big population like a California or a Florida, you're going to get a really big handle. One other thing I wanted to note that Miller told me, I asked him about the marketing, the marketing dollars we've seen all these companies spend, and he said he thinks that's going to continue. The companies really need to spend the marketing in order to get these betters in from their illegal means that they might have been using prior. A lot of different companies and betters have, or different companies are trying to acquire these guys by giving them free bets and giving betters an advantage. And that gets them away from the illegal gambling they were doing and into their ecosystem. That's something that probably isn't going to go away, but might become a little bit less frequent moving forward. Josh, what does this increase in betting volume this year mean for some of the publicly traded companies in the sports gaming industry? Yeah, Emily, it's still a really interesting space as far as publicly traded companies go, because there's really kind of two different sections we can look at here. There's the traditional brick and mortar casino companies that have got into the gaming space. When you look at a Penn National Gaming, Caesars has their own sports book now. MGM Resorts has BetMGM. And then we have DraftKings and FanDuel, some of the newer companies that are all, all online and don't have that traditional brick and mortar Las Vegas style vacation arm to them that we've seen before. So from analysts we've talked to at Yahoo Finance, the biggest things to watch are honestly, who's winning the marketing game bottom line with all that money they're spending on the ads we all see on TV and the deals they're giving out and who's partnering with the best content product. This is something that's been interesting that we've talked about here on the program before with some different CEOs and we'll probably talk about with some executives later this week is how these gambling companies are incorporating what they're doing in with a broadcast. We know Fubo Sportsbook, which streams sports, has been able to do this because they have an app that's all-inclusive. FanDuel does this a little bit where they can send you an alert that says your bet might miss, tune into this sport, and it sends you to an app to watch. I think that that might be kind of a key to unlock here. And one other thing on those marketing dollars, because we love talking about who's profitable and who's not, I wanted to circle back to New York from last week we saw Caesar Sportsbook come in with the biggest handle, over $615 million in New York over the first month. They also had the most aggressive marketing pitch, but it didn't hurt them. They had over $55 million in gross gambling revenue last month. So that marketing pitch paid off and got them the biggest gross gambling revenue we've seen to date, in, or we've, we saw in New York. So I think that if they, the company that finds the way to spend money on marketing while still securing that bottom line or the companies that are going to be the ones to watch moving forward. All right. I was part of at least one of those bets. I do know Josh in New York. So definitely got me on that front. Uh, shame that Minnesota is the only place right now with dead legislation. So we'll see if some uh, twins and Timberwolves fans can get their way in the future. Our own Josh Schaefer joining us here with the breakdown. Appreciate it, Josh.